Hi, this is Ashish Gupta. I'm uh, going to talk about uh, the Naktibba Trail, the trek that I did uh, on the New Year Eve of 2015. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of the trek, what to expect and uh, how to make it. Naktibba is a quick hike located in the Jaunpur Ranges ahead of Masuri and Dehradun. It is the highest peak in the area, standing at 9900 feet thereabouts. Naktibba is part of the Lesser Himalayan Ranges of the Garhwal region. Naktibba is also an easy and one of the quickest hiking trails from Delhi door to door. It is literally a weekend affair, while giving you the best of a hike. Be it starry skies, be it the mesmerizing views of the Himalayas, be it the beautiful walks under the shades, or be it the thrill of an altitude that can, you can boast of. If the season is appropriate, you can also get snow. I have read of three or four uh, routes to the summit. The one that I followed starts from Pantwari village. Mantwari is about 90 kilometers from Dehradun. A few shared taxis start every morning from Dehradun station for Pantwari Market Square. In December 2014, I paid rupees 150 one way. The road till Nanbag is a highway and is fantastic. At Nanbag, one leaves the highway and then the road till Pantwari is metal but ridden with potholes. Pantwari is at 4650 feet altitude and the climb to the summit takes you to 9900 feet of altitude. That's about 5250 feet of altitude gain in about 8 kilometers. You cannot buy necessities at Dehradun when leaving so early in the morning. Masuri or the roadside shops till Nanbag start opening when you reach there at around 9 am. Almost all things of basic necessities are available on the route from Nanbag to Pantwari. For the local contacts, guides number, shared taxi driver's number and similar information, search for the relevant threads on indiamike.com travel forum. Remember that rental gear is not available in Pantwari village unless you book that in advance using some local resource. In my opinion, the best way to do Naktibba trek is to reach Dehradun early morning, reach Pantwari by noon using a shared taxi and camp at the top of the same night. On the second day, you should start early to spend some time at the summit and return to the village, village before noon to board the last shared taxi from Pantwari to Dehradun which leaves at noon. Uh, what you see here is the Pantwari market square which is a hangout of folks of all professions and also for the folks who do not have a profession. Jokes apart, you can hire a guide or rent a room or board a vehicle or a taxi, shared taxi or park your own vehicle in this marketplace. In December of 2014, a porter charged me rupees 500 per day a guide charges slightly more and a pony owner will charge about Rs. 700 per day. Hiring a porter is not necessary for this trail. While going upward, the trail is pretty straightforward. During the morning hours, the trail is also very well trafficked. All the locals speak Hindi and are well adjusted to having outsiders trek here. However, when coming back downhill, there are one or two bifurcations in the trail that can be confusing. In fact, at one place, the arrow marks point the wrong way. These markings were arranged for by a local government office and they point towards the office, albeit away from the Pantwari village. For the village, trekkers should go sideways from the direction as pointed by the arrows. Now, Pantwari has a few basic and safe options for a night stay, which are opposite to this marketplace. There are some nice ch shops where you can have breakfast and uh, stack up on uh, a couple of regular food items. Talk with a few locals if you, are, if you intend to leave your vehicle parked in the marketplace. I know of a couple of folks who have left their vehicle there and according to them it's pretty safe to do so. What you see here is this Parmar sweet shop which is uh, one of the primary shops or I think maybe the only shop in the marketplace which will uh, serve you the basic necessities like packed food items, eggs, breads, milk, tea etc. If you want to carry boiled eggs with you for the trek this is a nice place to get some boiled eggs. The hiking trail starts from behind the village and uh, starts going upwards from next to the village temple. So in this pic you can see my guide and porter Bachchan Lal walking, taking their steps, leading outside the village. So 15-20 minutes into the hike, you reach a spot from where you can see the village and uh, let me point out a quick thing here. These are actually two villages, the Pantwari village and the Bhandasari village. So Bandasari village is on the closer side in this peak and the Pantwari village is on the further side of this peak. The Pantwari village has that marketplace and a good amount of the population lives in Bandasari village. 
to me what appeared is that there is a very slight subtle rivalry between the villages Bandasari village has most of the workers the daily wages the guys porters and the people who, who own the ponies whereas the Pandwari village is a little better off with the uh, better houses and uh, better businesses and uh, most of the guides and the shopkeepers and the taxi drivers are from the Pandwari village but i could be totally wrong on that over the two days of talking with my guide this is the hint that i got this photograph is of the first watering hole on the trail after the village it should take you about 45 minutes to reach here a quick tip for the trekkers the first one third part of the climb from the village is quite steep so carry a limited amount of water to last you just an hour i'm told that for about 6 months a year weather and road conditions permitting a vehicle can come up till this point to me this convenience along with the other conveniences make this trek very kid friendly to find this route on the map check my geo tagged images on the map in my flickr album when you check the images on the map you can clearly see a white trail or a small road coming up till this point and the same image is also geo tagged and this is the image at which the road ends you can see that this trail it criss crosses across a motorable road down below and it enters the shades so after the first watering hole there is a reasonable amount of shade that is available on the trail at times when you walk out of the shades you see some beautiful views of the low lying hills all around looking around you can clearly see that this hike will take you to the highest hill in the region this is the second water tank i came across on the trail it is well constructed but at that time it was running dry you can see a water pipe jetting out from the edge of this photograph somewhere above this tank the pipeline was broken you can see the leeward side of the jonpur range which seemed almost barren in december it would be interesting to see this stretch post monsoons like i mentioned before after the first water tank the trail has much shade in fact i started feeling a chill under the shades as i was sweaty and i removed my wind sheeter in the winters the wind was heavy and the temperature was low a little distance before the base the sun went down at about 1730 hours the sunset reminded me of the inxs song afterglow this photograph does not do justice to the sunset it was beautiful the afterglow went away in another 45 minutes so it was really dark by 1815 hours though i had no issues reaching the temple after dark just after 6 pm i reached the base the nagdevta temple which is at about 8600 feet of altitude the area around the temple had 1 to 2 inches of snow on 30 december it is not usual but about a week ago the hills had an unexpected snowfall and new delhi saw unexpected rainfall the snow did not melt given the shade of the trees what do you see in this photograph is the last water source on this trail opposite to the temple It sure looks dirty, but it's not. If you are careful enough to fill the bottle without disturbing the water much, locals use only this water for drinking and cooking at the temple. I personally carry a water purifying bottle with me, so any water is no issue for me. At the temple, the forest rest house is unattended, and though it has doors, but they lie open most of the times. One of the better rooms was this dirty. The other room had hosted some cattle previously, and it was unbearably dirty and smelled bad. Of the three rooms, not all are inhabitable. Nice thing that the rooms had a chimney in the corner. You can get firewood from behind the FRH. Shepherds fell some branches and leave them to dry. You can also make a broom using fresh branches with leaves to clean the floor if required. Before occupying, make sure that there are no animals inside other rooms. Pitching outside under a starry sky would have been fun, but the winters were chilly and windy. I chose to pitch the tent inside the FRH room. If you choose to pitch your tent outside, be sure to drive in your tent pegs very well. The night can be stormy. On 30 December, the winds must have been around 50 kmph outside. A tent not properly pitched can blow off the ground in such winds. That is me by the fire I lit in the corner. You can also see the firewood I dragged in the room. If you light one up, make sure to douse the fire or keep the door well ajar when sleeping with the fire burning. I somehow forgot this essential thing and woke up in the middle of the night smelling smoke. The room was completely filled with smoke. After coming back home, I left the tent pitched in open for the whole night. but a slight smell of soot and smoke remains i'm glad i got up and opened the doors at the night given a window in the room diagonally opposite to the door the room was well ventilated and here's a quick shot of the rest house on the morning of 31st december while walking towards the temple devta is the hindi word for deity locals call the temple just devta a lavish annual event is organized here and thousands of folks from all the nearby villages attend it a few years ago the locals got some sponsorship from a local political leader to construct the temple everyone donated with material or labor or both the villagers carried cement bags and bricks on the ponies and their backs for months now they have more expansion plans on their minds but they lack funds i am told that the folks from bandafari village contributed more with labor and the ones from pantwari village contributed less as bandasari village is closer to the trail and most folks in this village rely on the hill for their livelihood 
The water hole froze over at night. The wind chill was bad and I could not even get a comfortable sleep. I knew it was coming as my sleeping bag was not rated for such temperatures. My porter Bachchan Lal broke a nice round hole in the few millimeters thick ice layer and filled a bottle for our ascent to the summit called Jhandi. The Naktibba summit is another 90 to 120 minutes hike from the temple. Locals call it Jhandi as there are a few flags at the top. A steep trail goes upwards from behind the temple. Carry enough water for 2 to 3 hours as there is no water at the top. The entire walk is in the tree shades and is a bit steep at places. Snow takes much longer to melt under the shades, so I came across much snow throughout the trail. That would be me, an hour into the trail, walking through 1 to 2 inches of snow. In the last half of the trail at places from in between the trees, you can see the ranges of the Govind Pashu National Park on the Yamnotri side. In December, the trail has yellow drying grass and little snow all through. The snow is sparse and does not slow you down. And at places, the trail is as flat as seen in this photograph. All in all, it is a comfortable walk, though I doubt if kids will be able to make it after the previous day's rigor. Almost two hours into the trek, I saw the white flag called Jhandi. You can see it in the middle of the photograph peeking from behind the snow. The snow at the top was one to two feet deep. Needless to say, Carry a pair of waterproof shoes. Around New Year's, you may encounter snow or rains also. So carry appropriate protection. That's my foot, totally under snow. The water will soak into your shoes and wet your socks if you are not carrying something waterproof. For such light snow, a makeshift arrangement is to carry big polythene bags. Wear them over your socks and then wear the shoes. It'll act as a layer between your socks and shoes, protecting your feet from the cold. But then your feet cannot breathe, so it's not an optimum solution. I carry my Folklas 500 shoes and they serve me well on this trek. On the slippery frozen ice in the previous footholds on the trek and in the walk on the snow. And looking above, here's a rapturous view on the Yamnotri side of the state. Such skies and such mountains. It's a trekker's delight. Mountains you see are the ranges and massifs of Govind Pashu National Park. I could identify Swagrovani and Bandarpuch. Somewhere in the clouds is Chokhamba. I'm not sure if some of these are the hills of Kinnor district in Himachal Pradesh state. These religious flags mark the highest point of this region, the Nag Tibba summit. Hence the summit is called just Jhandi. I'm told that the locals wish to have a temple at this site too, but there is no funds for the same as well. This next photograph is from the camp on the second night, the New Year Eve. Much water went under the bridge in the last 6 hours from the last photograph. Let me tell you about my second biggest scare in the Himalayas till date. On my return, I had decided to do a homestay at my porter's place and leave the village in the morning. Later, I ended up syncing up with an upward bound group on 31st December. What a fun gang it was. I was lucky enough to catch up with them. So on my way down in the evening, I passed this group and for 30 minutes later, at 17.15 hours, I decided that I want to spend the New Year night with this group instead of doing a homestay in the village. Sun was about to set, so I paid my homebound guide and parted ways by starting uphill. All this knowing that it is not a good idea to hike uphill at sunset on an unfamiliar trail, that too without any orienteering equipment. Soon it got dark and I got lost in the jungle. I actually was following the correct trail, but as luck would have it, my guide took me via a shortcut the previous day. I did not remember walking on the current trail and I did not remember the unmarked shortcut as, as well. I went up and down the trail for about 300 meters a couple of times wondering what my options were. In the distance I could see some huts and open fields on a small plateau a few minutes downhill. I was told of a Nepali family living in the huts and I saw some folks and their dog going around. First things first, I decided on pitching next to this place as my fail safe option. Having a headlamp and a mobile power bank came in mighty handy. I called my guide a couple of times to figure that it was actually the right trail and that he had quote unquote misguided me using a shortcut the other day. Somewhere in there, langurs followed me on the treetops for 10 minutes in pitch black forest. I played some rock music and they stopped following me after that. I reached the camping ground of this group at 1930 hours and spent a great new year eve with them. In retrospect, I made the right decision to reach back their camping ground instead of pitching next to the Nepali family's house or walking all the way down to Pantwari village. Albeit the timing of the decision was bad. I should have decided about pitching with this group when I first met them at 4.30pm thereabouts. 
the learning for myself and the caution I want to share with you is to never ever go uphill after about 1600 hours. Star studded clear night sky was only surprised by the company next to the campfire. New Year Eve was long, warm and full of stories. Some of us called it a night at 2 a.m. on the morning of 1st January 2015. On the way back the next morning, I came across this spot where the arrow marks point towards the government office I mentioned before and the actual tail to Pranthwari goes down towards the left from this primary trail. So when you see these two white arrow marks pointing forward on the regular trail, turn left and leave the well-trodden trail. Mr. Bachchan Lal, my guide and his family were my first host on 1st January 2015 for an hour. I took a shower at their home and they served me my first meal of 2015. I am grateful to them for this. Lunch was local cuisine and was well cooked. The Bandasari folks are simpler and not so street smart. This family had expectations but absolutely no asks from me. I tipped the kids and the lady of the house and left in a rush with memories of a hearty time. The shared taxi driver was in intimated in advance by the family and was waiting in the Bantwari market square to pick me up. I would like to sum up this video log with a few panoramic shots of the trek. This is a shot of a temple and its vicinity. You can see some makeshift tin sheds under the shades. At the annual fair, the food is cooked and served in these sheds. This is a panorama of the forest rest house, the clearing at the top and the camping ground next to the temple. It's taken from the trail going upwards to the summit. In this last panorama, you can see the initial parts of the trail via the road. It's quite flat and winding and walking on it does not feel like a hike. To make time, one has to crisscross this trail and take a steeper one going under the trees. That's it for now. I hope you liked this video log and I sincerely hope it makes your Naktibba hike easy. If you have any more queries about the trek, go over to www.indiamike.com and post your queries in a relevant thread. Leave in the comment section below the information I may have missed, your suggestions or words of encouragement or just some friendly banter.